Uh, here's the smaller one. Hey, what's up reefers? I'm super excited today because two days ago I ordered a pair of fish that I've been waiting for for almost four months. And finally, they're here today, Saturday. I had to do the Saturday delivery because I'm going out of country end of this weekend. So I want to make sure that the fish gets here early on and at some time to acclimate to the tank. I got two boxes and over here, and over here, we got some of you guys watching a live stream. I figured it would be a kind of cool, fun little thing and try. Although I think the connection is pretty poor outside. That's why uh, it's not, I'm not sure if it's even streaming, but I see people leaving comments. All right, guys. So let's get the box inside and we'll continue. All right, guys. So we're going to open up the small box first. <laughs> Wait, I need another hand. Ah, hold on. I'm going to, I wonder if we can just bite it. Oh, that's not quite work. Uh, too loose. All right, I'm just going to go. Oh man, this is a really generous portion. So they they sell this macroalgae as a, a type of food for the... <laughs> yeah, I'm actually talking to people on live stream as well. Look at this. Inception. Uh, yeah, so basically uh, this macroalgae is mainly for food, but I really like how it looks. So I figured I'll just get it anyways and try to grow some of them in the sump and as well as in the tank island budget tank up, up, upstairs and we'll see how they go. And I really want to try it because they were on sale. It's normally like, I think it's like $12. It's on sale for seven bucks. So why not? Let's try it. All right guys, to be totally honest, I'm quite nervous actually. Video I can edit, but right now we got some quite a few people watching live as well. So if something turns out bad when I open the box, <sighs> okay, let's go. Excited. I'm really excited. So here it is. Biota Captain Brett Radio. I can't even pronounce it. Radio Fowlfish. I like these fish because um, number one, they're supposed to be pretty reef safe. They're little guys as well. And number two, they form a symbiotic relationship with Xenia. I know a lot of people don't like Xenia, but I am a fan of Xenia and I do have quite a bit going in the tank. So looking forward to it. Here it is. Let's see what we got. Okay. Is it one bag? Two bags. Okay, we got two bags. Is there a heat pack? Does heat pack? Heat pack is still warm, so that's that's always nice. Oh, this is actually really nice. I'm about to just shove it down my shirt. Uh, I'm gonna put you guys down first. And let's see. Okay. So I kind of took a peek at them already. I believe this is the slightly larger one. Let me see if she will come out. Doesn't want to come out. Okay, let's try the other one. The bigger girl does not want to come out. I feel like larger ones, female. I don't know. I don't know how I know. I just know. I just know these things. My, my radar. Ah, uh, yeah. Let's see. Check out this really nice bag of water. These are fantastic water from Life Aquaria. I just learned that Life Aquaria shipped the fish a little bit lower in salinity. Thank you for letting me know, Reef Keeper. Um, yeah, this one's not coming out as well, so I guess you, should, you guys just have to wait till later in the video to take a look and see how they look like. Yeah, that kind of worked out. See you guys in a bit. 20 minutes later. Alright guys, so now I have two fish all hooked up for the drip acclimation. So the acclimation process goes something like this. You want to float the bag first for about 15-20 minutes, equalize the temperature, so that the temperature in the bag equals to the temperature in the tank. And after that, sometimes people will dump the fish out into a bucket. In my case, I like to do it in the bag. And um, I will first dump out some of the water. There's a lot of water in the bag. I dump out some of the water first in the bag, and then I set up the drip. And I drip for about two to four drip per second. That's kind of the rate, and right here you can see how fast it is. These are basically just like the IV dripper. And once the water volume in the bag doubles, supposedly according to Life of Korea's instruction, you can put the fish right into the tank. However, what I like to do is actually dump it out and I do one more set. Now the danger here is that if the fish has been in transit for too long, like a long time, you may not want to drag this process out too long because as you open the bag, right, uh, if there's a lot of ammonia in the water, it may immediately start reacting to the oxygen that comes into the bag. So in my case, the fish has been in the bag for half a day, so it should be okay. But in case where the shipment got delayed and stuff like that, I believe uh, people actually just do really fast acclimation and then get the fish into the tank ASAP. But again, this is a regular case, so I'm just gonna take my time and let them kind of acclimate. Now, one quick thing I want to mention is that these dripper uh, from Innovative Marine, and I really like these guys. I actually got three of these going. And it's essentially just like an IV set. You can adjust the drip rate here. 
which in turn you can check right here and you got a nice little plastic hook right here. Nothing fancy, you can put together something like this pretty easily on your own, but they just put it together in a really nice package. If you're interested in buying this innovative marine um, acclimation kit, I'll have a link in the video description below or just search for it. All right, so the macro algae is good to go. So it's just these guys right here. Supposedly the herbivores really like them. They're really, really generous portion uh, from Life Aquaria. But these are the ones that break apart. I didn't realize these are the fragile ones. I thought it was like one nice solid piece. So this may get a little annoying. All right guys, so we have finished dripping the two fish and now I'm getting ready to release the fish. Now the proper way to do this is number one, you want to make sure the light is off. Okay, and I'll explain why my light is on right now. And number two, uh, you don't want any of the water from the back going to your tank. And I'll also explain why I have a little bit of water left in the back. So in my case, the fish are not quarantined. And ideally, you should always quarantine your fish. I just don't have a setup for it yet. I was thinking about using a 10 gallon, but because I'll be leaving uh, for Asia in a couple days, I don't feel comfortable leaving the fish in the 10 gallon tank with like an anatomy where uh, nobody's keeping an eye on him. So I figured they would just go straight into 45. I mean, it is a risk, but I'm I'm rolling the dice. Don't be like me. Ideally, always quarantine. Now, the second thing is that a lot of people like to net the fish out. That is probably a best practice. But for me personally, what work, what I like to do is like, I don't want to stress a fish. You know what I mean? I don't want to like get it out of gout water and stuff like that. So what I always end up doing is just kind of opening up the bag and just let it swim out as it's ready to go. And I'm especially doing this because I got more established fish in the tank and I got a huge anatomy. I'm, that's all, also the reason why the light is on. Because if the light is off, I'm really afraid that the fish will freak out, start dashing over the place and dash right into an anatomy and I lose that fish. So that's worst case scenario. And here we go, we see the foul fish kind of peeking out. Remember how when we're looking in the box, it wouldn't even come out? So here's your first glimpse at the uh, redial foul fish and it looks really nice. How about this guy right here? I'm gonna maneuver a little bit so that it knows. You can see the reef structure, know where it can go. And I also turn off the main pump so the flow is not um, insane. And I kind of want to let both fish out at the same time. Just so that we can uh, disperse the attention of the clownfish. And obviously this is just my way of doing it. I know there's a huge risk involved in terms of getting uh, things I don't want into the tank, but I feel like this is the least, well, maybe not the least stressful in this case, because this was refusing to come out. The little one is uh, ready to come out. It's like swimming on ice and pretty chill. The large one is the one that's kind of hiding and not really doing too much. So let me slowly. Yeah, this guy, this guy's ready to go. Just trying to get to the to the corals, and the clownfish is on guard. They're on guard. So we'll see how they interact. If um if I see any aggression from the clownfish, um, then I'll turn off the light or just pull the firefish to the sump. But uh, I'm counting on the fact that the body shape is so different, and I I believe that these firefish have a symbiotic relationship with the xenia that they'll stay up here versus like in clownfish territory. Even though the clownfish, clownfish thinks the entire tank's their territory. One eternity later. Oh, it's coming out, it's coming out, it came out, came out. Big one came out, big one came out first. Big one came out first, immediately went back in. It's scared. So this one is taking it slow. That one is just ready to dance, ready to go in. They're really distinct personality, look at that. Look at that guy. All right, I'm gonna give this a little time. I don't wanna, I don't wanna force them. There goes the small one. There goes that guy. All right, big dude, you should be all right. We got, we got some time to kind of acclimate. So, off you go, find your buddy. Find your buddy. Where's your buddy? All right, I'm watching a clownfish really carefully. And right now the main pump is off. Just, uh, I want to give them a chance to kind of get used to the tank without having to fight the current as well. So, there he is. Where did the other one go? Oh, the other one is all the way over here. All right, clownfish going up, let me see. Investigating. This is good. Totally ignoring them. This is good. I feel like I'm, I feel like Caesar Milan. It's like, this is good guys. This is good, ignoring each other. 
Two dogs like knowing each other, they're good. Hoi, hoi. No, just sampling for this food. Not, so it's not an aggressive pick, that's good. Just like a gentle nip, kind of curious. Fought is some floating algae. And you'll notice that my Ecotech 10, I have the dry side because the west side totally rusted. And I have to buy a new one. Nope, volunteer, volu this, uh, it's out of Vonti, so it's not covered. Too bad. Okay, here they are, the two of them found each other and cruising together a little bit. Main pump is still off. I'm slightly concerned because of the, it seems like they don't really swim fast at all. They just kind of float around. That's not good. But so far only the male clown come up, like kind of nip at the larger foul fish. I think it's a little thing that sticks out from the tail that's kind of, I think the clown believes that like it's food or something. So it's not an aggressive nip. It's more like a curious one. It's like, oh, can I eat this? Yeah, they're just chilling. And there's a the male again. Male was uh, kind of curiously pecking at the uh, tail of the larger foul fish, thinking, probably thinking it's food. There's a lot of things kind of dangling. Dude, I think the clown, I feel like the foul fish hate me, man. Wherever I go, they just kind of casually swim away. What the heck, man? They did that on purpose. Whatever, you'll love me. You'll love me. Everybody loves me. You'll love me. All right, guys, so they have kind of taken up residence in the back right above the frag rack. The flow seems to be a little bit lower over there and just hanging out. And a small one already did a couple laps around the tank and seems okay. It'll come here, get blown over here, seems to enjoy it, and then go back here and then do it all over again. So, uh, seems all right. All right, so I'm just gonna leave them alone, let them acclimate. Both of them are kind of hanging out together back there, so that's a good sign. Um, and the clowns are totally just ignoring them, which is a fantastic sign. We'll check back later today and see what's going on with them. Three hours later. Guys, check this out. It seems like they have settled in quite a bit. Uh, here's the smaller one. Bold, up front and center. Just like how it was before. Uh, the larger one is kind of hanging out in the back. I think this this may be actually the first time the these foul fish are discovering the Xenia field. So I'm hoping that they'll kind of move into this area up front. That'd be perfect. Uh, the other guy, I believe, is back there. Yep, he's hanging out near the Gorgonia, and that seems to be his spot right there, or her spot. Uh, I'm hoping that she'll decide to move to the front. But it's cool because, like, when they see each other, they tend to kind of just like hang out together. So it's really cool, really cool to see something different. I just like the way they hover as well. Yeah. Oh, there they go again. Look, they're, they're finding each other again, kind of hanging out. I, I just feel like they hate me, man. Whenever, wherever I'm near, they just kind of like move away from where I am. Oh well, it'll take some time. Two days later. Hey, <laughs> that's not the sound of me peeing, it's the auto top off. Anyways, what's up, Reverse? It has been about two days since we received the foul fish, they're adjusting quite well and all the other fish pretty much ignore them. However, the only issue is that I'm having trouble getting them feed. So today, uh, we got to do something a little different. Um, so in cases where the fish does not eat and I'm really afraid they're going to starve, especially since I'm, I'm well, not moving, not yet, especially since I'm visiting Asia, um, Hong Kong tomorrow. So yesterday I picked up some live brine shrimp and we were able to get some really good feeding response from them. They're not eating any prepared food yet. They're probably still kind of adjusting, so let's see where the guys are. So one of them is here. Let me see if he eats. Usually he hates me. There we go. Sorry, it's kind of hard to see right here. It's not the best spot. Okay. Oh, there you go. You see how he kind of picks at the live brine shrimps? <clears throat> Unfortunately, the spot he picked right here is really fast flow. Well, the main thing is that the brine shrimp does not really hold any nutritional value, um, especially these grown ones. But at least I want something in the stomach, you know, as a stopgap while I wean them onto uh, something a little bit more substantial. Oh, the other one's back there. Eventually, I want to wean them onto uh, pallets, flake food, and um, frozen. Oh, both of them together now. Here. Let's see if they. So they're slow. They're slow feeder, but they, they kind of speed up. If, look at that. They kind of speed up when they see food. But for the most part, they just kind of hover. 
which is kind of cool. And they, whenever they see each other, they they kind of get together. And at night, they seem to like to sleep among the Gorgonian, which is surprising. I thought they'll like、uh, Xenia more because they do have a symbiotic relationship with Xenia. Anyways, let's uh let's get more down here. Look at them go. Yeah, they're, they're feeding a lot more aggressively today, which is great. <clears throat> and there's only the second day.、Um, they arrive Saturday morning. Right now is Monday night.、Uh, two and a half days. Let me try to get some to the smaller guy. Pretty. Well, the funny thing is, like the larger one was actually really skittish, but the role may have reversed. Now the the large one is like front and center, and the smaller one is kind of in hiding. Um, so yeah, I'll be in、uh, I'll be in Hong Kong for the next couple days for Thanksgiving. Oh, here's a little guy, and I have enlisted the help of、uh, Miss Average Reefer, Sally. So she's gonna pick up some live brine and then come by to target feed these guys to make sure they get some food. So huge, huge, huge thanks to Sally for making a trip. There you go. Good. Get another one. Go for it. <laughs> the clown is taking advantage of the situation. They all taking advantage of the situation. They all enjoying the food, but yeah, really liking these guys, man. All right, well that is that.、Um, well, I'm, I'm gonna head to I'm gonna head Hong Kong. I guess I'll see you guys, and I'll do an update on these guys later. Peace. One week later. Hey, what's up, Reefers? I'm back from Asia. Fantastic trip, but let's check on the file fish. All right, so while I was gone, Miss Average Reefer has been taking care of the file fish by feeding them live brine, and they they survived. When I first got home from、uh, from my Asia trip, they were both front and center, really bold, exploring the tank and waiting for food, which is fantastic to see. But、uh, as soon as I got back home, I fed the tank some flake food, and I'll show you what happened. So we got some prime reef, one of my favorite flake food, and we'll let them go in the water column. And there they are. Look at that! They are eating flake, and they, furthermore, they actually really aggressively go after the flake food. They have no problem competing with the clownfish at all. Check out these guys! Yeah, man, this—I'm just so happy, dude. So I posted the issue of them not taking prepared food on my Instagram account and in the Purple Reefer, and. Juan DM review for saying that they're probably stressed out from shipping. That's why they're not eating prepared food. And sure enough, he was absolutely right. Within a week, they started eating prepared food again. And、um, what's what's even better is that the clownfish totally just ignore them. They sometimes even like kind of like hang out, they swim side by side, and just going after the flake food together. So I'm really happy. I don't add fish often in this tank、uh, because I feel like they add to add bile though. So unless the fish really has something to offer or they're really unique and some fish I really want. I typically just keep whatever I have in the tank,、um, <laughs> but I'm so glad I added them. I'm really happy. Red tail cats. These get huge. Shark size. They get to like six foot each. Oh, sharks. 